Hi there. You're in the lab with your mate JJ. So today we're going to be continuing on with our Maxitronics 10 in 1 electronic project lab. Uh, we'll be doing experiment number nine. Experiment number nine is the audio frequency oscillator. So um, in this circuit, we basically uh, we build an oscillator, uh, which is controlled, the, the frequency of the oscillation is controlled by a resistor and a capacitor. Um, and we, we vary the capacitor in order to understand how that affects the, uh, the tone. So um, you can also affect the tone by varying the resistor, but that's not done in this particular circuit. So let's pop it over to the booth. We'll put this guy together. And then once that's done, we'll have a look at it over here under the bench. Here we are in the booth. I'll put together the next circuit. This is circuit number nine, the uh, audio frequency oscillator. So that follows on from our earlier experiment, which was the uh, patrol car zone. It's a, a bit unfortunate that the, um, the output of these uh, circuits is the headphone because you, you uh, don't get the full experience with the headphone because you can't hear it. Uh, but at least we have the oscilloscope so we can uh, actually see that the output signal is there. And, you know, you've heard one oscillator, you've heard them all, haven't you? So um, let's, uh, let's check out this circuit. So this is... Uh, as I said, this is circuit number nine, the audio frequency oscillator. This circuit demonstrates how the tone of an audio frequency oscillator can be changed. The circuit shown is similar to the one described in the Morse code oscillator of circuit number two. First, listen to the tone produced when the 0.05 microfarad capacitor is connected in the base circuit of the transmitter. Now connect the 0.001 microfarad capacitor in the circuit instead of 0.05 microfarad. Note how the pitch of the tone changed. You can also vary the oscillator frequency by changing the value of the resistor. Okay, that's cool. So that looks like there's, um, what, there's seven wires and then there's optional wires. You can optionally wire in one or the other of the capacitors. Oh, that's cool. And then and then you can see the schematic down there, the bottom right. So, uh, yeah, okay, cool. Um, let's put this in together. So, uh, over we go. All right. Now the first is uh, 10 to 18, we've got uh, 10 to 18, there we go, alright, that's putting the base of the NPN transistor into the ceramic capacitor, and then we've got uh, 10 to 22, 10 to 22, okay that's for the 470 kilo ohm resistor, 10 to 22, and 11 to 15. Where's 15? Down there on the transformer. It's 11. Oop, that didn't go in. 11 to 15. And uh, 12 to 27. 12 is the emitter of the MPN transistor. And 27 is the negative uh, power out. That's 12 to 27. <coughs> And then we've got 13 to 19. So 13 is down at the trans transformer. 13 and 19 is the other end of the capacitor here. That's the transformer connecting to the capacitor. And then uh, 14 to 26. So 14 is the middle pin on the transformer. And 26 is the positive uh, power. That's uh, 14 to 26 and then we've got 23 to 26 23 to 26 just putting some power onto the uh, onto the resistor 23 to 26 23 and 26 all right and then uh, the optional ones are 10 to 16 and 13 to 17 so that's obviously the optional wiring of this capacitor or this capacitor. Do you see? You do. So uh, that's this circuit constructed. Uh, we'll pop you over to the bench and we'll have a look at it. Here we are on the bench. So uh, just going to put out our new uh, oscillator under the uh, under the scope, see what, see what it does. First things first, let's put some power on. So uh, just connect the power there. And if I uh, just throw the power on, there we go. Oh, we haven't connected our, um, our headphone. Uh, the headphone, uh, it's the same as in the previous circuit, so it just means uh, one end goes nowhere, it goes onto pin 24 of the signal lamp, and then the other one's on pin 15. Now that should be outputting a noise. It is, but it's very weak. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, well, um, let's just hook in our, our scope. So we want... Uh, We've got negative 
where is the negative power uh, negative is connected to the uh, the NPN transistor here on the emitter and the, the uh, output signals down here all right and if we just tune in our scope then you can see let's just zoom that out a bit can we do that uh, there we go so that frequency is uh, about 180 Hertz isn't it it's not very consistent but it's uh, Yeah, so the, the frequency of the output is uh, is 180 hertz, and um, if we have a look over on the uh, on the power supply over here, uh, the the the, uh, the power draw is negligible. It's basically it's drawing 0, 0.000 amps, so it's it's not even one milliamp of power, um, which probably explains why it's so quiet. Um, so uh, the thing with this circuit that um, uh, uh, you know what I don't know how to do is how to freeze a signal. I wonder if there's some way. I'll tell you what, I'm going to pause the video just for a second. I'm going to go and do some research. I'm going to try and find out if there's some way to like, take a photo of, a, of the signal because uh, we, we, want to we want to compare um, the waveform that we see at the moment to the waveform that we see when we switch in the other capacitor. So give me a sec and I'll be back very soon. Okay, so I'm back. Um, I wasn't able to figure out uh, what I wanted to figure out. I, I figured out how to freeze the thing. You just basically press single and, and, and it takes a snapshot of it. But what I wasn't able to figure out was how you can leave one channel in single mode and the other one in active mode or live mode. Um, so, uh, yeah, I couldn't figure that out. Anyway, we're looking at the circuit um, with the, the 0 0.05 microfarad uh, ceramic capacitor wired in. That's uh, up the back here. So what we're going to do is we're going to wire in the other capacitor, which is uh, less than that. It's 0 0.001 microfarads. Um, and we'll just see the change in frequency now. Um, let me make a note. Uh, the, uh, the frequency on this signal at the moment is 180 hertz for the uh, 0.05 UF uh, capacitor. Now what we're going to do is switch in the other capacitor. So we'll just do that right now. And the uh, I've got the earphone there plugged in here. I, I don't imagine you'll be able to hear it, um, but the, the pitch has increased significantly. And uh, we see that the signal's a bit of a mess there. So let's just auto tune him again. All right. And we're looking at uh, between 1.5 and 2 kilohertz. It's not triggering really well, is it? Where's the trigger? Bring him up a bit. There we go. That's triggering fairly well. So uh, just change the time frame there a bit. So it's uh, it's an interesting signal, isn't it? It sort of bottoms out a bit. <sighs> yeah. Anyway, um, that uh, measurement is giving us. It actually changes quite a bit. It changes. Yeah, I I I don't know that that's even regular enough for me to. Don't bring the trigger down a bit more. It's uh, the the frequency is being reported as anywhere from 500 hertz up to about two kilohertz. So 500 to two uh, k. Okay, so um, I, I, I think uh, we, we got the point of this uh, experiment and that was to show that the, uh, the oscillator can be controlled by the capacitor. So when you put in the, the smaller uh, capacitor, the frequency increases. Uh, and, and that, I believe, is the uh, learning from this circuit. So let me throw you back over to the farewell cam. Um, that was the, uh, the audio frequency oscillator. It was the penultimate project. Uh, up next is the final project in our 10-in-1 uh, kit. And after that, we'll be moving on to the Sensor Robot 20. So um, yeah, uh, that, that's everything for now. Um, if you're interested in seeing the final project, which is the burglar alarm, don't forget to hit subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.